Mafe, and welcome to our another episode of Moms of Best. We're so glad to have everyone here in our show. And of course, hello BFF. How are you today? I am good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I, <laughs> I was about to. I was about to just go into a full conversation with you. <laughs> I know. That's right. We have our show on right now. We are live. Oh <laughs> we are live. Hello, everybody. My name is Yona, and welcome. Um, to everyone who's tuned in here on Facebook as well as on Kumu. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. <laughs> yes, Yona. So Yona and I, you know, we are here with you again today to cherish new stories by meeting inspiring individuals. We are just so overjoyed and overwhelmed with happiness for all the support ever since we started the Moms Their Best show. Yes, that's true, Marfe. And that's why we continue to have a live every Thursday because we want to reach more people uh, who really need to hear the learnings and experiences that each of our guests have. Now, hopefully, like us, um, you'll be inspired and empowered to do the same. So we're excited to have our very special guest as we give the stage to an amazing woman who's not only known for her expertise as a therapist and coach, but for her love for the ma massage industry. Now, our guest for today is an amazing woman, as I mentioned, who is also thriving in her career as a muscular skeletal therapy and treatment. Um, she is a specialist and coach to aspiring therapists aiming to educate and inspire their potential. Um, besides being a successful director and chief musculoskeletal specialist, she also founded a school for therapists named the Supercharged Therapist Method offering modules and workshops to help their students improve their skills. Now her talent and expertise even reach um, those across the globe, Australia, Canada, the US, Europe, and South Africa and everywhere in between. So it's pretty exciting. Yes. Super incredible woman is ready to be on our online show today. So getting to know her would be such a great blessing for us. I know Yona and I are excited for this episode. So yeah. what are we waiting for? Let's all welcome Paula Nutting. Hi, Paula. Hey guys, great to see Hi. you. Great to and have thank you. you. Thank you for not calling me Paula Nutting because so many people in this country <laughs> are <like>, Paula Nutting. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm pronouncing everything correctly so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank but, you, Paula, for joining us. How is your day going, firstly? Yeah, it's beautiful. Like, it's, it's I just had a lovely, lovely day. Had, uh, worked on some some upcoming workshops that I'm doing here this month for South Africa and had a couple of uh, patients to look after this afternoon and then Thursday night is date night with my yes partner. oh Second I love that, love that. <laughs> will be taking me out to um to dinner tonight at somewhere oh, special yeah Amazing. So that's a, a, a true reminder of why this woman is successful because she does take time for self-love, right? So before we get into your journey, your inspiring journney, and Yona mentioned so many titles that you are wearing, um, we always like to start off with the icebreaker. So I have a, a fun question for you, Paula. So it is, if you would have a chance to build any machine today, what would that be and why? Wow. Oh, that's a good <laughs> With no idea of uh, the, the question ahead of time. So, guys, this really is live. There is no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to build a confidence machine. Yes. Oh, yes. To be able to go, oh, I've, do I doubt myself or I'm feeling nervous about something or whatever it is, and then go, no, no get into the confidence machine, press the button and come out going, I can totally rock that. Whatever oh, I, I love that. Do it. Yeah. it brings me back to primary school, Yona, you know, when, when our teacher would ask us that question and yeah. you just, your imagination just goes um, buck wild. My imagination is doing that right now because it's so timely. So yeah. 
Watch out, guys. Yeah. Paula one day will create a confidence machine for exactly. all of us. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Oh my God, that would be amazing. But I love that idea, <laughs> Paula. That is, that is so cool. Can you imagine just pressing that button, just walking in, and then yes. when you walk out, you're like, yes, I'm ready for the day. <laughs> well, you, you know, as moms, we're going to be in there quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy thing is the button's here right yeah. now. The button is right wow. here, right now, and you just have to put your big girl panties on and <laughs> pull them up high and go, oh, I can do it. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> So guys, we're gonna learn so much for this uh, from Paula, and let, let's get to the the serious side a little bit. Um, of course, I, I don't, do not want to get this wrong, but do share with us um, a little bit about your background, your journey, and of course, as a musculoskeletal specialist. Oh yeah, <laughs> she did well done. Again, in America, they call me a musculoskeletal. So I, <laughs> Dr. Perry Nicholson, who I, I talk to quite often, he's a chiropractor and amazing on inflammation and lymphatic work. Wow. Like he's so clever. He says, hey, on parlor, before we go any further, can you just see musculoskeletal or you say it? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a ride. This, this, the world is, is as you want to make it. You know, you can make it as, yeah. as challenging or as half full as you want so it's everything comes back to you but for me my like when I went through school my whole thing was really more about sport than education like I was much happier with climbing trees and and you know kicking footballs with my brother and you know swimming and surfboarding and stuff and academically I wasn't that that switched on I didn't get academia in my head until years later so when I finished school my mother was uh it was the last year that we could actually get into nursing without maths from grade 10. So my mother and I marched up to the hospital and she actually happened to know the, the assistant matron who was on that day and, and I got in without really an interview or without anything. So, yeah, got, yeah thank you, world, for letting that happen. <laughs> Went through, did straight through my nursing um, and then did eight years in intensive care. So I finally kind of got my like triple oh. certificate and then nursing. So I learned about pathology and all of that and people skills, like how, mm. how to actually hold somebody's hand when their, their partner is, is dying in a ward or how to actually, you know, hold the hair out of out of the toilet when someone's throwing mm. up from you know, chemotherapy drugs or you know, yeah. all of that. So you learn compassion there. And then I left and became a... Um, a uh, personal trainer. I used to teach aerobics 25 classes a week for a handful of years. <laughs> wow. And, and, you know, you don't want to see someone in a, in a leotard and a G-string thong back then. In the 80s, we had, you know, the... <laughs> that was like the Jane Fonda type style. Yes. Right? yes. That's it. With the fluoro shoelaces. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever wear anything. Scrunched up the socks that are scrunched up. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's the one. That's, well, that was me. I can still do a grapevine on an easy walk if you if you call me on it. And normally <laughs> we out a dance floor or a nightclub. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> and then after I, I was doing that, so I learned about sports and exercise physiology, and then I decided to get into massage. And I started in, in the, doing partly the diploma. And um, we were at a meeting. And they were talking about the associations and how there was an association for massage. And I thought oh, I'd stick my head in the door and find out what that was all about. And then I thought, why not be part of um, an industry that's trying to support us? So I put my hand in to be a member there. And then they asked if I would, if anyone was stupid enough to become a registrar or be involved in the, in the, the, the structure of it. So I became registrar for a few years and then vice president and then president of our state-based um, wow. association. And that was really cool, looking after the massage industry, for like massage therapists mm -hmm. and, and trying to help their needs. And then we amalgamated in Australia, all the states joined in. So I went from uh, being on the board in the state to being on the board nationally. And I actually had two terms in our Massage and Myotherapy Australia 
and that was uh, I've done three years as president, two years as uh, one year as vice president. Stepped down now, but was on the chair of education and chair of ethics. So I've been involved at that higher level, knowing that that everyone has a role to play in our community. So my community is the massage community, and I wanted to try to help with therapists to become the best people for their patients and their clients. And that's mm -hmm. kind of my journey. And, and I and I strive to help patients become well and clients feeling nurtured and um, mm -hmm. therapists feel like they, they can make a true difference to their patients and their community at large. Right. So beautiful, Paula. You know, I, I'm a true believer that we're all somewhat healers for others whether you go the education route or even just be a life coach for others would have um, of course having a degree having your expertise is one way of identifying but knowing you just for the past few months now i need to know why you know uh, you have such a amazing positive energy is because you love seeing people heal from within yeah. Right. Even um, before before even touching them. So it leads me to my next question. You know, what about musculoskeletal therapy yes. that makes you want to get up in the morning? Oh, what is it about it? Um, knowing yes. that I can make a change for people. So, for instance, mm. I was supposed to be working primarily on, on my work today. A friend of mine rang me yesterday and begged that I could have a look at her mum because she's had pain for two weeks. And I thought, oh, yes, all right. So I had a look at, looked after Jill today and she had really bad, like terrible back pain, terrible leg pain, worked out where it was referring mm -hmm. from. And she got up and walked out after an hour's work um, with 95% of the pain gone. And wow. that to me is why I get yes. up. And because That's it's amazing. fun, like, like I can still, you know, we're in the clinic. I don't, I've stopped listening to Enya and Whale Humping. Sorry, Enya, you're great, but not in my clinic anymore. <laughs> Um, no more whale music, no more pan pipes, no more water music. Like we just play whatever I damn whatever. well want. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like, and you know, if if I'm making jokes in the clinic room with the with the client or the patient, that's you know, it's it's light. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you see somebody feeling like as as you get uh, become an old dog in this industry, you'll you pick up on on. A look or a feel or a, a breath or a hell breath and you go something's going on and that's when we start to unpack it as we go okay I need to stop for a moment talk to me what's happening mm. and then mm. and then we, we, come, we come into that space and that's my job my job is to facilitate them to be able to talk it out and to mm -hmm. then say, all right, this isn't my role because as a musculoskeletal therapist, I'm good at muscles and you know, nerves and fascia and you know, that kind of stuff, balance. But emotional balance or mental balance, let's pass you on to whoever is the best person for you. And that way we make a, a change as a whole. And I love going to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. really. I mean, it truly shows, you know, um, when you love your passion, it doesn't become work. It just becomes a, you know, your your life, your lifestyle. And I know you've mentioned many or a few memorable uh, moments in your career. But um, let me start with how was your first client? How did you feel? <laughs> you know, because of course you're experienced now. But how were you when you first started? Terrified, terrified, but brave in the same thing i was mm -hmm. like okay so you know you first start massaging and you've got these thumbs oh, I'm gonna work hard because you get taught how to work hard and then you know you, you just i apologize to probably everybody in the first year and a half of treatment because they would have all come out with bruises um anybody else who's out there who does massage remedial massage remedial therapy you all know the same thing we work so hard and so smart and you're nervous and you kind of i remember having i was doing a course and um, I had my book 
and like the treatment book and I was saying to my patient can you or client can you hold this for me so the, so they're like they're holding it and I'm going all right so now I just have to take your <laughs> that's a classic I love that <laughs> it was very normal and, and like this this is a terrible like it was quite new in when I was working but um, it's a terrible story, but not really a terrible story. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's got. A, um, I was working in a nursing home, and they would call me, in and they'd say, I'd say, "Who do I need to look at?" And they'd say, "Can you go to see Mrs. So and So and Mr. So and So? These rooms, you know, it's three or four patients." So I'd come in, and um, I had this one darling little old lady, and, and um, she was quite old, very very sick, and they said she's uh, she was very constipated. They said, can you give her something to, you know, maybe some abdominal massage to reduce her stress and, and calm everything down and kind of maybe let things go. So I thought I've just been doing aromatherapy. So I used lavender and I used, uh, which is about blood pressure dropping that a little bit. I used mm -hmm. um, um, some frankincense because that's kind oh. of you know, nurturing and letting go. And I yeah. massaged her and you know just neck and shoulders and hands and some tummy stuff because of the constipation anyway i came back later on that afternoon and i said oh by the way how did mrs so-and-so go and they said oh mm -hmm. yeah, she died <gasps> i was like what <laughs> so i said I went, oh my god let it go i didn't mean it like that but i'm sure it was not actually me <laughs> i'm sure oh my was, god. but the timing was terrible <laughs> Oh my yes. gosh. I always remember that. So I kind of went, oh, did I do something wrong? And they said, no, 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 no. But you probably gave her a beautiful experience as she as she transitioned. Yeah. But it right. scared the crap out of me. Excuse the French. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, All of us would have, would have messed me up also. Yeah. But of course, seeing you now, um, you know, with an experience like that and many more experiences, um, I'm pretty sure that um, you are now more than courageous to share on how to keep reinventing yourself. Yeah. Um, because if, I'm sure, like, you know, for people that want to follow your footsteps, there's always those experiences that make you either continue yeah. or just evaluate is this me or not i mean did you ever have those moments yes yeah 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 am i is this is this really where i want to be it's real and it's hard to mm -hmm. to go from just being a massage therapist doing not much of you know just having fun massaging not kind of thinking about am i going to make a difference in your postural pain stuff uh, and then go, okay, I'm going to have to actually do some more study. I'm going to have to work a little bit harder. I'm going to have to write down those case studies. I'm going to have to do all those reports, reflective practice, all that, and more education. Like I did a diploma in health science, musculoskeletal, so mm -hmm. there was added added knowledge there. could have been so much easier to sit back and do massage wellness. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to teach what, I, what I've learned and like to sit up and do hours and hours and hours of, of writing, you know, content and then trying to mm. send it out there and making sure that people understand. Like the the membership portal that I've got, it's all about getting, mm. being there all the time for them, helping them. And um, it's you know, I could sit back and, and say, no, I don't want to do any of that. I'm just going to play golf mm -hmm. twice a week and go to Pilates mm. five times a week and have coffee. But yeah. The deeper drive in me doesn't want to do that. But you know, mm. a lot of times I think sometimes it'd be nice to do nothing, play in the garden. <laughs> I suppose that's what vacations are for though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you have those feelings, sometimes you just go, Okay, I think it's time to just um sit back, have a bit of a vacay or you know, like what you did um recently where you even just a short time away. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, like an overnighter. That's also a nice way to recharge, right? Yeah, I don't have, I can never justify in my brain taking two weeks off. It, it just it doesn't, it doesn't sit in my energetic level. Yeah. Uh, I normally get a bit bored after a while, but to take, uh, you know, like, so it was my partner's 60th birthday and, and we went up and we had a, an overnighter and, and then we had some group of friends and we did four nights. So that was 
you know, four nights in one week and then another week, another Amazing. night. Probably the night being Friday night, but still was you know, out of contact. So, yeah. yeah, little bite-sized things. But some people want to take six weeks and, and journey through Tibet, and some people want to yeah. take one day yes. a fortnight. So it's, yeah, that's true. I mean, exactly it's whatever really works out for each one of us right because we're all yeah. individuals i know all three of us would probably have a different definition for relaxing so mm -hmm. um but yeah like for you i know you just shared with us um quite uh quite a story i think it's probably the mm -hmm. best way i could um, explain it but you know in terms of the challenges that you face through your businesses especially uh, particularly in the past 18 months uh, or maybe it's even the, the 12 months since the pandemic, you know, what have been like your biggest challenges and and how have you managed those challenges? Yeah. Um, it's with COVID because I know like A, I was supposed to be going teaching in South Africa and the States and that got bumped. Um, so the initial sadness about not being able to go through an African safari and, and you know climbing yeah. up yeah you know, like doing all the fun stuff because normally when i go out, when i do my working holidays it's four weeks of traveling through um a country and and having an amazing experience teaching yeah. which i'm passionate about experience which i'm also passionate about so missing out on that has kind of and probably other people will feel the same you just don't feel like you're standing on a, on a stable surface anymore i kind of like before i really felt grounded and now I kind of go, well, every time I try to book something, this weekend, as you know, I was supposed to be teaching in Perth. I, I should have been in the air. Actually, mm -hmm. I should have landed at me over Fremantle, watching the sun go down over Frio and having a, a little creatures. That's what I should be doing right now. But yeah. I'm so happy that I'm here with you girls. Uh, yes. and it's <laughs> how, how we all kind of COVID's mucked us up a bit. Um, so... <laughs> The way I've managed it is try to do little goal setting things. So I've got uh, like I this week, like this is a quick sheet, but I try to put down um, a goal for the quarter and, and focusing on what I want to do. So if I can't get the big things, at least I can write down little stuff and I can just tick them off as I go. And if a little mm -hmm. thing for you as a massage therapist is emailing out your current client list and say how are you then you then, then that's a little tick and that that helps with our dopamine so it helps with with our and our at a cerebral level giving us a aha i feel good moment and we've lost the aha feel good moments right now mm, so yeah that's, that's one of my little strategies oh i love that i love that and i think it's such a um practical and easy strategy that we can all apply because it's yes. also something that not it doesn't just apply in terms of business, but that's also something that we could apply in our personal life, right? Like yeah. we're all mm -hmm. able to reach out to family members, especially those who haven't been able to travel to see them physically. Even just a quick message, like what yeah. you mentioned, you know, just to say hello will increase that um, dopamine level. I, that was such a great. Paula, well, thank mm -hmm. you. So for everybody who's watching right now, um, after the show reach out to somebody whether it's a professional colleague or a per, like a, a family member reach out to them just to say hello yeah and then, exactly. just, and then just go from there <laughs> when, when, it, when we first when when the virus first attacked we thought it was like the war of the world we're all going to be dead in six weeks like that that stress mm. level um we made sure that my i've got a son and his wife who live in, in london i've got uh my oh. daughter was living um, away at that stage. Um, actually, she was down in Labrador, and my my youngest son was in the army, so he was down mm. in Holsworth, down outside Sydney. Yeah. We would we would get on and do a Zoom once mm -hmm. a week, and then I've got school friends of mine that I've been friends with since grade four, and a few oh. of them we would do the same thing. We'd just walk around. It was a Thursday night. We go well, because well, Wednesday night was Thursday, and we still kind of did a half day night um, just at home. Uh, but we we would just have a half hour of connection and we'll be a glass of wine life's terrible what am i gonna do <laughs> it's, like, it's okay we'll, we'll, be, we'll be all right the yeah. trumpets won't get us but we did that all the time and i've got a gorgeous friend of mine who i know has mental health issues and i would just harass her 
Come on, get on, come on, Zoom, come on, Zoom, come on, Zoom, come on, Zoom, come on, Zoom. Mm-hmm. Well, finally, and she goes, oh, God, I can't stand you. All right, you're annoying me. And then at the end, she goes, thank you for contacting me. So, yes. Yeah, oh, that's be, beautiful. You've got to be a little bit yeah. pushy for people who are introspective or introverts because yeah. they they feel like, oh, I don't, want, I don't want to be that person who is, like, I don't want to be in any trouble. So don't bother mm-hmm. coming. You know, I have to hide by myself. And everyone needs everyone needs support. That's that's our industry. That's yeah. That's why we're yeah. in the industry. Yeah, that's so true. That is so true. Uh, so fun fact. I'm not too sure if we share this with you, Paula, but Marfe and I have also known each other since primary school. So we totally get <laughs> the fact that you were able to get a group of friends with a glass of wine in talking about <laughs> life because. Um, even for us, like Martha and, I will, Martha and I will grab a glass of wine, just hop onto yes. Zoom and with our girlfriends and just, you know, have a chat about everything because we can't see, like physically be with each other, but we're mm-hmm. able to at least, you know, reminisce, talk about the fun and like, you know, how we could help each other. Like you said, we're always, um, I guess, no matter what industry you're in also, we, we have that ability to support other people especially yeah. the ones that we right. care about so i i love that you just you do that because it's you know it just it just goes to show that it's, it's in all of us um you yes. know just that care that we have for other people now you mentioned yeah. um i love what you said about sometimes we just need to nudge or push people especially the ones who are you know who are a little bit more introvert than um than others um mm-hmm. and what do you think is like what other secrets could you share uh, which can help people really, you know, nudge them or um, help them go to the direction that they, you know, their goals are. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, for, for instance, with those, like as we just said, then uh, with love with my gorgeous friend T. I'm not giving her full name. Um, just like, she goes, I hate you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, can can we talk? I I would just really value your. I would really value your opinion on a couple of things. So it would make it would just make her feel like was it like, that there was a reason for the the meeting versus going. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. There has to be there has to be a value add for the person that you're trying to reach out for. Um, uh, small goal sets. I think it's it's yeah. getting out of bed like. Um, a typical example, my daughter has got a three-year-old and a one-year-old, or almost almost three and one, and has, has been completely sleep deprived for three years. Uh, and I can always tell her big tip is when she's had no sleep and completely exhausted, she puts more makeup on and puts a better outfit on. So mm. I'll come to her place and go, wow, you've had no sleep last night, have you? <laughs> because you know, <laughs> this gorgeous one piece, something or other, and her face is fully done up like she's about to go out. And she's like, I can yeah. tell. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> make the effort. If you make the effort internally, you are still going to get those chemoreceptors, the parts of your brain that are going to say, I want something. Uh, little mm. things like, you know, you could, you, we try to feed um, the, as I said, the endorphins feed the things that we that we want, and quite often we use sweet foods to do that. Mm. Because it's the same; it's sugar is the same part of the brain that, that cocaine, you know, that kind of stimulant area. We yeah. can also get that from other forms of, um, of of work. So you can do it through. You can actually do it through meditation versus like gentle meditation say so you set yourself a goal for 10 minutes you can do it through positive affirmations mm. you, can, you can write down um, um, a, a, a list of this is what i want to achieve and this is and you can go through the whole visualization set there's a, a good um shout out to james and alicia cook because they're amazing at, at, at helping with with that brain training but um something like writing down or visualizing where i am now where i want to be in two years and where I am in the future my perfect world and then you mm. just say you, you put yourself into that perfect world and you start saying I am amazing I have got these things I am talking so one of few of my visualizations was that I am I I have I'm already talking on TED talks I'm already doing worldwide plenaries 
I'm already traveling internationally and visualizing. I could sit down and visualize holding the first class and business class tickets in the plane with the glass of Dom Perignon. Like in my head, yeah. it's already there. So by just continuously writing down exactly like the five or six things that you want out of life and then walking around with really vibrant music because the music will instill that stuff. So like I would march up and down through the house going, I am empowered, I, I can do this, I, I've got the, you know, I know my knowledge, I can give this to everybody and <clears throat> boom, 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 until you, that's, that's, your, that's your reality. So it could be, I am the greatest mother, my food is nutritional, I, I can deal with stress where when my children scream, I'm going to laugh, like, you know, just bang, 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 bring it into whatever level that you're, you're pitching your, your current planet at. I'm growing mm -hmm. the best vegetables, my soil is healthy, the, the sun is nurturing, like just mm -hmm. bang, 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 and that will be enough to actually get that the same part of the brain working. Oh, yes, that's amazing. Yes. I love that. I just, I, you know, I feel like it, it's like hyping yourself up, right? Um, and just fueling your mind with those um, those positive affirmations, like what you said. Yeah. Now, for people who want to go into that career path, um, perhaps may not necessarily be like what you did with regards to, you know, being J um, Jane Fonda and um, you know the nursing <laughs> path, and you know, I had to, I had to, I had to say that again, um, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. we may, we may ask. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring you back for a exactly. class. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, I guess for anybody out there who may have an interest in um, massage or even the musculoskeletal uh, specialization, mm -hmm. what would be your advice for them? Okay, so have a look. Um, for people in Australia, it's an easy fix because we've got a national training package and the, the colleges that are here have to follow what they call the, the uh, RTO, so they have to be registered training organisations so that they, they fit into a structured academic um, level that is transportable all the way around Australia. If you either come in as a certificate four, which is more of your wellness model, you can go through to the diploma. So that normally ticks off at about six months, 12 months is normally your diploma, which gives you a little bit more um, knowledge on doing assessments, et cetera. Um, and, or you can then go up to advanced diploma, myotherapy, musculoskeletal therapy, things like that. For um, over uh, in uh, other parts of Southeast Asia or America or Canada or whatever, you just probably have a look on the websites for um, careers in massage because quite often what you'll see is you'll have like a lot of the colleges, but you might have some of the associations and you'll kind of get a, an idea of, from an association level what colleges they would say are, are the ones to go to. Because if you've got college chonky McChonky that mm. comes out diploma students in six weeks versus uh, you know, ABC, College of Natural Medicine that finishes that course in 12 months then it gives you as a as someone who's googling more of an idea of what you want to do you want to make, make sure that you have a good sensation in your hands because if you if you if you don't have um if when you touch you don't really feel it's always going to be a hard job hmm. like you just slide your fingers and anyone listening to this you just slide your fingers down your, your face you should have a real sense of tactile yeah. and most of it, or even just rubbing your fingers across each other because yeah. there's more nerve endings, really, really close nerve endings, the hands, face, lips, etc. cetera. Um, that, that's, that's individual. Some people have really, really close nerve endings and some people are a little bit wider. So the, the closer they are, the better the touch and the better the ah. transfer between you and your the client. So oh, um, okay. self -touch. Uh, and, and be prepared to touch people because COVID right mm. now, how do I touch someone? How do I work on someone? How do I not get infected? Mm. So um, there are a lot of the colleges are going to be teaching some more online content versus all hands on face to face. So mm -hmm. there's some of the tips, but just be prepared to um, to 
go with the flow, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Like start in massage, but if you think, oh, hang on, I don't really want to do that, I might want to do reflexology or I might want to do homeopathy or I might want to do reflexology. Just just follow your uh, follow your heart. That's yes. Beautiful. And of course, of course, Paula, you have your own mentorship programs going on. Maybe you can share with everyone um, what's happening, where can they find you and, you know, and how they can gift people too, because at the moment it is Christmas season soon. Yeah. So if you're thinking about gifting um, others, I know material things are nice, but investing on education and even you know the mental health and, and everything like that i know paula has that in store for you so go ahead paula invite everyone to where they can find you so this is my ruthless open marketing no i'm kidding um so yes it is <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not taking any more patients so i'm like here tapped out because i've got too many anyway but if you're doing marketing it's a great idea for putting christmas in putting um halloween you know any of those things do it two for one <laughs> Just go, yeah. you know, you get, you, if you can get someone to come along, you'll get, you, they'll get their treatment half price and you get yours for free. And then that you end up, they, you end up always upskilling that person or, you know, you, they'll get the free one, but, you know, they might get a free half hour, but you'll get, you'll get someone to come in who will then normally upgrade to a full, so they'll pay 30 the, the difference of the 30 minutes and you've got a new client so it's always good oh, to wow. it. it's kind of just one of those kind of marketing schemes that are a useful give versus just take 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 um the other thing is put your cards i always put my cards out at um um down at the local coffee shop i got anyone oh. who comes in and has a trip well, it's actually more of a gift so i'll take i'll get the vouchers from the coffee shop so every person that would come in i'd give them a voucher they'd come down to the coffee shop paul has just done give me a massage here's the card and at the end of the month i just give them five, you know pay for their coffee so oh i love that them. that's yeah. a great idea yeah so you're just paying for mm -hmm. their long black or their skinny flat white or whatever it is and and they then go wow i love this therapist like she's actually cares for me and yeah. they're like you're yeah, Paula because she gives free coffee in december like <laughs> you know so some things like that anyway aside from that my gratuitous plug uh, i'm running cook for massage therapists and, and uh people who might have their husband or wife or daughter or son or whatever who is a massage therapist and you'd want them to upskill and become a little bit more um emotionally connected with a community have some strong mentoring because that's what we're that this the mentor program the this membership program is really a mentors program um, that you want to get a little bit of help. I do fortnightly newsletters that are really academic, like it's they're cool. They're not like boring reading PubMed. They're actually there's video links with with how to do, and we've got loads and loads and loads of videos that you can actually access. Um, I'm, we're on our private Facebook page, which means that you get um, every month we do two like these how are you going come on in intro information stuff we do um a daily posting on on not only my stuff but stuff from amazing practitioners like eric dalton and um whitney low and you know um, you know buckets of really clever people it's 33 dollars australian a month so that's actually less than that one or it's a coffee it's a dollar a day so it's less mm -hmm. than um and it is escalating therapists from this level of knowledge to this level of knowledge and expanding out because I'm getting not only my stuff, so not only the myofascial release work and the Chapman's reflexes, but also we've got joint mobilizing from someone, um, neurolymphatic stuff from someone, um, lymphatic stuff from someone. So there's there's a whole bunch of really strong content that you can access in one safe environment with friends. Yeah, because it's yes. really like we're all friends. We're all like you, know, you might have known me only via uh, email like this, but it doesn't take long before you are like fully. Hey, how's it going? You know, so <laughs> yes, and of course they can follow you also on your social media platforms, yes. which is 
on the ticker right now. Um, but of course, Paula, maybe you want to add what else is uh, other platforms that you want them to check you out on. Okay, so if the main one that I'm on with with stuff would be Facebook. So Paula Nutting, like Facebook, Paula Nutting at Facebook, whatever that is, I'm not very good with my social media stuff, hence. Yes. <laughs> well, all you have to do is search Paula's name and you will find everything. And thank you, Paula. I know we can talk on and on and on. We'll have part two with you because there's just so much more. And I want to have an update on the confidence machine. <laughs> I want to get a pink color for myself. But anywho, you know, you're so amazing. And with everything you're doing, um, how genuine you are with sharing your passion uh, for your respective field, you are definitely a gateway for people to take this route and, and develop their skills as therapists. Thank you for sharing your story. You're welcome. And if anybody does want to contact me, you'd like email to ask just general questions. I'm totally mm -hmm. open to, like, you know, I'm never scared of, of replying back to anyone who has questions. Um, so, yeah, Paula Nutting, YMS at gmail.com. Amazing, yes. Paula. You're so generous. Um, you know, and it just goes to show how truly passionate you are about what you do and also the community that you serve. So thank you so much for your time. And, um, you know, we're so excited that uh, we were able to, yeah, just keep on empowering others with you. So thank you, Paula. And we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Date night. Yes. <laughs> have a good date night. Have a good date yes. night. We'll do. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Paula. All right, Paula, we'll see Bye. you in a bit. Um, Yona, Paula is so fun. I mean, I see why she's yeah. so successful because she does yeah. live life on um, a mission to making sure that she puts a smile on another person's face or just yeah. being that cheerleader that we always talk about, right? So yeah. thank you, Paula, for that reminder. Um, love it. How about you, Yona? Yeah. What's your personal takeaway? I think for me, it's just, you know, you just, you can really see how passionate she is about what she does. And, um, you know, I mentioned in terms of how she really wants to help other people, um, mm -hmm. you know, with no expectation or anything like that in return. And so that really is the true essence of empowerment, right? Really, yeah. in order for us to be able to empower ourselves, where we do that through empowering others. And I just love that she does that so generously. And and all of those tips, those practical, easy tips that she gave us, yes. that she gave us, you know, visualization, mm -hmm. even just getting out of bed, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and having those goals that we have in mind and just taking them as we go yes. along, whether it's big or small. Um, I just, I just love all of those practical things. So, ah, what amazing way to wrap up our day. Um, and I also, know. And a good reminder too that you know, date night is important mm -hmm. too. Super. And just like that, you know, uh, our live session when we did our Zumba on Kumu, now oh. we have no more shame in that because we have a fellow Jane Fonda that yeah, we I know just... and can guide us. So Paula, we'll take you up on that soon. But thank you again, everyone uh, on Kumu and of course yes. our supporters on our other platforms. Don't forget to, um, if you want to watch the replay, we are also available on our Spotify account, Mums yes. No Best, and also our YouTube channel, uh, Mums No Best. So, my salamat, everyone. Yona, um, yes. appreciate you so much. And I guess we can share that we yes. will see everyone again in the next episode of Mums. Mums No Best. Oh, I thought we had it. <laughs> see you guys.